Welcome back to Akron Summit's franchise here on Madden 25. Hope you guys didn't forget about this series because I know I sure didn't. I had a lot of grinding to do for my other series, the SFL, but that is finally done. Two episodes of that now uploaded on the channel. Go check it out if you're not familiar with it. It's a very fun and interactive series, and I think you guys will have a very fun time over there if you're not familiar with it. But our first game here on Summit's franchise was unfortunately a 28-17 loss against the LA Chargers. Not expecting too much more here against the Baltimore Ravens in week two, although they did lose their first game, so they are 0-1 as well. And it looks like they really only rushed the ball well in week one, so we'll have to see if that trend continues, obviously with Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson being a running back in his own right. And we get a look at the league leaders after just one week of action, but still Garner Minshew uh, second place in the league with 308 yards. He did have three interceptions in that first game, however. And then Trey Tucker, the two year pro out of Cincinnati. He's actually third in the league with 129. So gotta love that. And before we dive into action here today, guys, we got a few things to go over. We got some rookie quarterbacks that I'm looking at. We also got some uh, storylines here that we got to take a look at before diving into action. We got a lot to get into today. Cue the intro, man. I know it's only week two and we don't know anything about these players yet, but we are already on the hunt for our QB of the future. And we got four quarterbacks here projected to go in the first round. So you got to figure one of these guys is going to be the guy here for the Akron summits. We got Devin Scott. He's six foot four, 231 pounds. Looks like he's about 55 years old in his mugshot there. Obviously we could change that if we take him, but uh, North Dakota state, so maybe trying to follow in the footsteps of Dak Prescott. And we got Kevin Saunders, six foot three, 221 pounds out of Michigan. Apparently he was uh, JJ McCarthy's backup, I guess, in this, this uh, Madden verse that we got going on here. We got Glenn Fox, six, five, very good size, 231 pounds. Quinn Ewers, he, who? Huh? Uh, Glenn Fox is out of Texas, just like yours. And then George Brackett, six foot four. 231 pounds out of Penn State. Again, it's only week two. Don't know anything about these guys yet, so we will definitely take a deeper dive into these uh, good old gents here. But some really good talent, it appears. Heavy QB draft class, and you best believe we are going to be scouting these guys much, much deeper as we progress here in the franchise. Our offensive coordinator says he heard a rumor that the media is going to ask us about expectations for our first round pick today. It's that time of the year. Yeah, they want to know how they'll perform and not sure who they're talking about. Who are they talking about? The Raiders first round pick. I'm drawing a blank right now, but we're going to find out right now in the press conference what the man of few words, Coach Smalls, has to say. Good to see you. Let's talk about the draft and your first round pick. Are they talking about, oh, obviously, Brock Bowers. Duh, CJ, I've been away from this franchise for way too long here. What are our expectations for Brock Bowers? I mean, 70 catches and 800 yards because he's one of our main targets. We got Devontae Adams and remember Jacoby Myers who elevated himself up to a superstar. But even with that being said, Brock Bowers, he's gonna be probably one of my main targets. And if he does meet this lofty goal that we've set for him, he will earn a whopping 12,000 XP. Back in the press conference, I could have swore that Coach Smalls said no more questions. He's a easy sell, I guess. And now he wants to hear the next question. So what's the next question? Coach, how do you feel about the result in your season opener? Obviously not happy with how we played, but aside from those picks, it was our defense. It, yeah, which side of the ball struggled more? It was most certainly defense. We did not really have too much of a problem moving the ball. I know we only put up 17 points, but the yards were there. And who needs to play better this week? It's got to be the secondary. So we are going to say pass defense for sure. Our pass defense, you tell them, Coach Smalls. Which one? Is there more than one pass defense? Uh, oh, which player? Okay. 
Um, I mean, probably our starting CB, Nate Hobbs. So Nate Hobbs is going to be motivated, and uh, he is going to earn a plus three man coverage and zone coverage for the next game. We're going to need that. Ravens obviously run heavy, but Lamar Jackson, he's a passer too. People seem to forget that he can stand there in the pocket. I would even say he's passed first. Obviously, he's a great runner, but he could sling the ball downfield to guys like Mark Andrews and Zay Flowers. So having that extra coverage certainly will help us in this game. And when you talk about the Ravens, yes, obviously you talk about run, but I am not touching defending the run with a 10-foot freaking pull, man. At least not here in Madden because Derrick Henry's liable to put up 200 yards against us. So I think that we're going to start out defend the short pass against Lamar Jackson, make him beat us downfield. And right now I got half pad starters. I mean, I'm fine with that. I really don't want to risk any more injuries. But as far as our uh, rush or, or our offensive game plan, I think we really need to establish the run. I mean, the Ravens built on defense. They got guys like Marlon Humphreys or Marlon Humphrey, Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams even. So if we can rely heavily on the running game and not be forced to throw the ball downfield with uh, Garner Minshew, and God, please just let me get an interception. I, I'm going to allow 30 points or less. I mean, I'm highly, highly confident that the Ravens are going to put up some points against us. But if we can get the run game established and not have to rely on Garner Minshew, that will probably do us wonders. Got a much needed upgrade for Trayvon Merrick here, and we really want to continue to develop him because he could be a long term staple on this team. I mean, still young, 25 years old, plus three zone coverage for a safety is very good. And obviously that star development is going to help him develop just a bit faster. But when you talk about last week's performance, as we said in the press conference, it was the play of the defense, specifically the secondary. So hopefully that will be a little bit different here going down to M&T Bank Stadium. Hostile territory. Still yet to see a game in uh, Rubber City Stadium in Akron, but that should be coming very, very soon. So if you guys are fired up for some more Akron Summits franchise content and you're loving the series so far, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Almost at 1K subscribers, guys. I will do an NFL jersey giveaway. Once we hit that, check out the channel membership too. If you'd like to support me, you get a bunch of cool perks and that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. But we are primed and ready for Probably an ass whooping here, but you never know. Without further ado, guys, let's get on down to MT Bank Stadium and get ready for the game. Opening kick is up and off, and that is AJ Cole doing the honors. So we are going to get to see this Akron Summit's defense and the secondary that we talked so much about in the press conference. We tried to hype them up, we tried to light a fire under those boys. They're playing one of the best uh, two time league MVP, Lamar Jackson. And his first game, though, I mean, not really that great. He had a touchdown, a buck 67 through the air. I think uh, with Derrick Henry only having, what did it say, 74 yards, I would imagine he probably did some damage in the running game, which actually I should have put the option defense on conservative. Didn't even think about that. But Jackson starting out eye form here. Got to watch new Baltimore Raven Derrick Henry. He is going to be the recipient of that one. He breaks about every tackle that gets thrown his way. Max Crosby was there for cleanup work, but Derrick Henry does pick up a nice healthy gain of about eight. And what will this Ravens team do today? We are going to tell you what, going to go option defense conservative. Absolutely. 100%. They're coming out gun, but with only two wide receivers. So I think we can safely bring our three, four defense out here. Going to use her up on Epps and it's going to be another give to Henry. And that time we're there to drive him backwards. Forward progress does say no gain, and that's going to bring up third and two. We're going to go blitz here. It's dicey, but you got to take some shots and take some gambles. If you hope to win some games, it's a design run to Jackson, and he's going to get it by a short and a curly. That was a direct snap to Jackson. I was not expecting that, but I guess when you play Lamar Jackson, you got to expect that. You expect him more to do, you know, read options and things of that nature, but Definitely direct snaps are not off the table. And nice job by Jackson picking up the first down. It's going to be Henry again. And nice, nice open field tackle there by Nate Hobbs. That one kind of had me scared for a moment. But we were able to limit him to only two. Play uh, some good man coverage here, boys. Maybe Max Crosby can get in the backfield and 
Caused some damage. We really need him to. Oh, I whiffed the tackle. Max Crosby did get in the backfield. So he definitely heard me, but I whiffed the tackle. So that is on me. Derrick Henry picks up another healthy gain. And the Ravens are driving downfield, which does not surprise me. I mean, like I said, my expectations for not only this game, but really just this first season in general, not very high. I mean, you know, I guess uh, crazy things could happen, but it's not a very good team. I'm not really the best Madden player in the world. Nate Hobbs, another open field tackle with some cleanup work there also by Isaiah Palomo and gain a four on the play. You know, I mean, <laughs> look, I'm not expecting us to, to come out here and win a Super Bowl. Like, would I be happy about that? Yeah, I would be absolutely giddy about that. I'll tell you what, Nate Hobbs, though, is doing a good job. That time it was usered by me. And, oh, hey, come on, man. We tried to help up Derrick Henry, trying to make this a gentleman's game. He didn't want no part of that. I'm going to remember that. Okay, noted. And let's see if we can stop them on third and six. I am sending some pressure, and that's going to be a give to Henry. Wasn't expecting that. And a nice stop by the Summits. That should bring out... Texas Longhorn legend Justin Tucker and he's going to drill this because he's automatic so I'm not even going to attempt to block this field goal. We will just uh, let bygones be bygones and be happy with our win of holding the Ravens to three. Here comes Minshew Mania. Didn't play terrible in the first game. He, uh, he had two picks. Okay, I thought he had three. I like two better but I like zero even more than that. So Hopefully we can clean that up a bit. I mean, the yardage was there, yes, but it is Madden. It's not terribly difficult to get yards in this game. I, you know what? We are going to audible this. Did not really get Devontae Adams going in the first game at all. So if I could hit him on a quick step drop, corner is playing outside shade there. Can we get it over the head? Oh, Adams catches it. Did not have the speed, though, to outrun. The defender, that was Marcus Williams, and that was actually a kind of a dicey throw there. Um, it wasn't really, they they were expecting that, I would say, but a nice ball for Minshew. He threaded the needle, and Devontae Adams has more yards now than he had in the entire first game. Now we'll go ahead and test this inside run. Let's use her up on Roquan Smith as the mic, and hopefully Madison can sift through the traffic there. Wasn't really able to do that and he did not impress me at all in that first game I don't know if it was him I don't know if it was the offensive line but all I know is coach Smalls was not a happy man at all now we got some curls here probably looking Jacoby Myers or maybe now we'll go Trey Tucker who oh nice broken tackle look Trey Tucker is the third leading receiver in the NFL in this Madden universe albeit small sample size only one game I get it but he is a speed demon, and he can most certainly, certainly do that. Speaking of Trey Tucker, let's put him on a streak and kind of clear out some of this riffraff here. I'm looking for Devontae Adams. We got him. Adams. Oh, nice adjustment. This is the Devontae Adams that we did not see in the first game. And this is the Devontae Adams that we're going to need to see if we hope to stay competitive against most of these teams. This time we'll follow our big fullback Kyle Juszczyk. Nice block there, and that's a good run from Madison. That may be more yardage than he had in the entire first game on just that one carry. It was actually, believe it or not, Amir Abdullah was our main threat. Not even Zamir White. I, Zamir White didn't even really see the field. I don't know why, but Amir Abdullah, he impressed with every touch of the ball. First of all, ball. Yeah. That was weird. Uh, Trey Tucker going to be looking for him on the RPO. I might have got baited. Oh, my God. You got to be kidding me. Uh, nope. It is uh, a pick there. That's about the last thing we could have had happen. And I thought we had space there on the RPO. And another good drive wasted. That's pretty much what happened in the first game. We drove the ball downfield. We picked up yardage. And then we just made stupid mental errors. And that was one that we really couldn't afford. Derrick Henry, though, going to be stopped by Divine Diablo. That is an absolute deflator. So, again, a chance to hopefully get them off of the field here in third down. I'm not holding my breath again, but we are going to go blitz. Might not be the smartest thing to do, but we're at least going to try it. Got to 
Again, got to roll the dice, got to make a gamble. This could be a running play. It is. We had a chance to get Henry. We can't stop him. The open field tackles. Oh, my God. Fourth and inches. <laughs> That's about. That is the most stressful two yards that you will ever see. But surely John Harbaugh will punt. And our defense does come in to bail us out. 3-0 in the first quarter. We got to find pay dirt here, man. The chances, the opportunities are here. Are they going to go for this? Oh, I was about to say, got to watch the fake, though. I would be yeah, highly, highly upset if they fake this Jordan Stout. Hopefully, he just boots it away, which he will. Thank you. And again, chance to uh, take the lead uh -huh. here. Abdullah oh, got crunched there on the return. Got to wipe that INT from our memory. So we are going to come out play action here and hopefully take a shot to Myers or maybe at least have Harrison Bryant. We're going to go to Bryant. I don't trust that that wouldn't be another pick there. And remember, that should be Michael Mayer playing in that tight end number two spot. But he's gone for, I want to say, I think it's seven weeks. Uh, he's He's gone for a while. So Harrison Bryant is going to be our tight end number two. Not a bad option, Harrison Bryant. I watched him a lot in Cleveland. He's a good tight end. And he may be the recipient of another one here, which he is. Bryant going to turn up field and actually fall forward for a first down. Come on, single back here. Going to motion over Brock Bowers and continue to try to get this running game established here. We made it our game plan focus, so we're not going to give up on it. Madison finds the seam. Okay. Oh, he's still going. Oh, my God. He's still going. Madison, what? What is going on here? I saw. Oh, my God. Dude, hold on. I, <laughs> I took my hand off of the controller because he was just sandwiched in between a bunch of rave. Hold on. I got to see. I got to see that back. I, I don't even know how Madison was not stopped here. Okay, that was a good cut there. Followed his block right there. I'm like, look, he's he's sandwiched. He's club sandwiched in between some Ravens. And I mean, I could have swore he was down there. But he, he just, he kept going. He hurdles a man. I took my hand off the controller. He breaks a tackle. Going to break another one here before he's finally, finally brought down there by Marcus Williams. And I, that's a lesson that you look, you never take your hand off of the controller, guys, because you just never know what could happen. And more runs like that, man, maybe uh, Madison will be. Will be deserving of that starting role. We're going to go to Amir Abdullah here. Really want to punch this in. And Abdullah breaking tackles as well. That time he is stonewalled by Kyle Van Noy. The 11-year vet for no game. Got to score a TD here, man. No, t no uh, field goals. No turnovers. Probably going to be Bowers or Myers. It's Bowers. Bang. Touchdown for Brock Bowers. That is lovely. And we're working towards those 70 receptions. Brock Bowers going to... Get open in the back of the end zone, and that was much, much needed as we shrug off that INT. It happens, and pending the extra point, we are going to go up 7-3. to three. So I'll tell you, if nothing else, our defense is looking a lot better. We got them into uh, some fourth downs, some punts, and hopefully we could just keep the good times rolling. I really need Max Crosby to get in here and force some pressure. Uh, Lamar Jackson can tend to be... A little paranoid back there in that pocket. And, ooh, Crosby got, ooh, okay. Crosby was coming off of the edge there. And Robert Spillane acting like he did something. But that ball was thrown into the turf. So, come on, Robert. You're good. I like you. But, uh, yeah, you didn't really do too much on that one, brother. And here on second and ten, let's get some pressure. Going to be an outside run to Henry. This could spell disaster. Marcus Epps with a nice open field tackle. But Henry already at 59 yards. Already close to his total of 74 in the first game. Got our dime package in here, but I want Robert Spillane to do what really Robert Spillane does, and that's play coverage there in the middle of the field. That is what he's good at after all. And Mark Andrews, what he's good at is catching balls downfield and picking up big gains. X-Factor player. And when you talk about tight ends in the league, of course you got, you know, the big names like Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, Mark Andrews definitely up there as well. I would even say maybe David Njoku on the Browns. Now, maybe that's me being a little biased, you know, being a being a Browns fan, a closet Browns fan. Remember, I'm a Packers fan. And uh, hopefully maybe Luke Musgrave or Tucker Kraft of the Packers can be in that conversation one day. 
But Mark Andrews, definitely one of the best. I need Divine Diablo to shoot a gap here. Not going to happen. And we had a chance for a pick. But that is going to be Isaiah Likely helping the Ravens retake the lead. Going to be 10-7, pending the extra point. Going to go back on offense and hopefully engineer another drive like we had last time. They're kind of showing me the same look here. I want to audible and go to Adams, but maybe they're baiting me. So we're going to continue to try to get this ground game established with Madison. I mean, he's running much better than he did in the first game. I will definitely give him that. That first game was rather ugly, if I do say so myself. And he's at least running, you know, competently in this game. Oh, wow. my God. I Yeah, this is definitely going to be... Uh, Devontae Adams is on press, too, but this is a quick step drop to Trey Tucker. No way it's not. And Trey, this is part of the reason why he's the third leading receiver in the NFL. He lines up in the slot. Guys, leave him uncovered. It's going to be a quick step drop and sling. Got Amir Abdullah in. I don't know why Zamir White is not in on a lot of these, uh, and, and really any of these sets. I don't think we're yet to see him. I mean, remember in uh, in camp, there was a battle against him and Alexander Madison, and Ma <laughs> Madison won the battle, and uh, uh, Zamir White's like, man, screw this. I'm done. He got really, really depressed. Madison back in the game now, and that time going to be shut down. And that should take us down to the two-minute warning. 10-7, but we are driving, and we get the ball back after halftime, too. So we got to have, hopefully, some good clock management. I like the idea of going screen here. This seems like a great time to do it. We got Amir Abdullah, who's the shifty, crafty veteran in here. Just can't take a sack in this situation, of course. Abdullah, I mean... So they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. The blocks would be nice, and Abdullah fumbles it. That is wonderful, wonderful indeed. Ball's picked up there by Trenton Simpson. And we just can't stop turning the ball over. I mean, you know, you say some of these are my fault, and I would be the first to admit that. But a fumble like that, I got nothing to do with it. That's just the Madden God saying, screw this guy. And the second time we had a drive wasted, and that one was key and crucial because we had a chance to score, manage the clock well and then go into the locker room come out and score again and now we got to play damage control and hopefully not allow the ravens to score approaching a minute here to go ravens don't seem to be really in a too much of a too much of a hurry i mean they do got all three timeouts and there's no clock runoff when you go into the huddle which is absolutely crazy there should be and i'm pretty sure when you go no huddle there's like a tons of clock runoff it doesn't make any sense Nice defense there by Jack Jones. That'll bring up second. And, or wait, he caught that? That did not look like a catch to me, but whatever. I mean, the clock continues to run, so I guess that's a good thing. I could have swore, though, that that was a, a drop by the receiver, but I guess not. And now the Ravens call a timeout. Okay, very curious clock management indeed. I'm going to go back to zone. I just, I don't know. I don't feel great about man coverage. I don't feel good about any coverage, really. And this is going to actually be... Nope, it's a play action. Oh, I thought he went to the outside flat, but he went to Mark Andrews. I was usured on my man and completely... I thought he went to the receiver, and he ended up going to Mark Andrews. Now Mark Andrews is in motion, so of course, we're usured up on Crosby. I'm going to actually drop Crosby back in coverage a little bit. It's going to be a scramble for Jackson. We know he can do that. Jackson actually not going to get there, and the Ravens are forced to call their second timeout. That'll bring up second and inches. I need man coverage on the outside, and I'm really hoping this is a run. I'm going to use her up on Divine Diablo. If it's a pass, I feel like we're screwed. It is going to be a run, and we're there to meet Derrick Henry with Christian Wilkins. And the Ravens are apparently going to let this thing tick down and go for the field goal. So that is, or are they going to, I mean, okay. Yeah, the clock management, very strange from John Harbaugh. But that is damage control because that does keep it a one-score game. What? I am so confused right now. Now the Ravens are going to go for it after calling a timeout. I mean, it's Madden, so they'll probably get it. But, like, if that was the case, what? Oh, my God, dude. That was the most horrible, horrific clock management that I have ever seen in my entire life. I mean, I guess whatever, they just throw it out of bounds and kick the field goal. But they didn't even try anything. 
I don't know. They're going to go up uh, 13 to 7 here, but that was a very, very strange series of events that we just saw. 13 7 is the score. We get the ball back after halftime. Still a one possession game, but we just can't fumble. We can't throw picks. Like, you know, the stuff that we've, that I've pretty much been doing both episodes so far. Fumbles are not my fault, though. I, I can't, you know, I understand fumbles happen in the NFL, but man, did the one this week and last week come at a very inopportune time. And apparently, Bryce Young has no stats uh, in the second quarter. I find that very hard to believe. This halftime logic here in Madden is very, very odd. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the second quarter and Jared Goff is one for three. Like, what are we talking about? And then he'll probably finish with like 300 yards. It, it makes no sense. There's that crazy run from Madison. That should have been a touchdown, but man, he may have just uh, secured himself a starting spot there. Can't really seem to stop the Ravens, although I will say we're very much bend but don't break. And what we did in the first half was run inside. I'm not changing that at all. I may change. I don't want to give up LB, linebacker, and DB running support, though. I don't like the sound of that at all. So that is why I picked defend the short pass. And that is what we're going to stay with here in the second half. Start the second half here with a little TE attack. And they are showing coverage on the outside. Oh, I tried to hit Brock Bowers. I should have. Just taken off with Garner Minshew, but uh, Samson Ebicom was right there. The big play potential was there, and I just couldn't uh, couldn't get it out of my mind. And the coach really wants us to run it. I don't really want to do that necessarily. I mean, I really, if I'm being honest, I kind of want to audible this to Brock Bowers, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and ID up this uh, corner here as the mic and hopefully Amir Abdullah can get a nice block, which he is. And Abdullah, don't fumble it again, please. Then we most certainly would seize Amir White. But it's a nice run from Amir making up for that uh, fumble that he had earlier in the game. I do not want to run it. Oh, you know what? No, this is uh, this is going to be Devontae Adams City. Now, this may come back to bite me, uh, depending if that linebacker drops back. But we're at least going to try it. Adams is open. He catches it. Thank you. Devontae Adams having a pretty good game. Minshew only at 110. And very, very different from that 300-plus yard performance that we saw in the first game. But our defense is playing better, and we got this thing into down to the 31-yard line. Go ahead and send Zach Gentry over in motion. Going to keep it on the ground with Madison, and the line does not shift either, which I do like. Madison, I needed one more block, and he could have had some space there. We got to play this thing safe because we are technically in field goal range coach is saying i actually like the pa cross i really want to hit jacoby myers on one of these uh routes here but i'm just really kind of gun shy right now i don't want to throw a pick but that's got to be myers come on hang on thank you jacoby go ahead and flex on him my man we got this thing down to the seven yard line we had it down uh within the 10 inside the 10 earlier and we saw how and it was that same play right there rpo yeah not calling that. We're just going to try to run behind big old Kyle Juszczyk. Jacoby Myers. Oh, man. This could be a quick step drop to him. But no. We're going to keep it on the ground to Madison. I'm not feeling great about this. But if we have a good lead block here. Madison just got stuffed. I tried to move to the right. He was pretty much cement shoes there. Stuffed in his tracks. Only a gain of one. We're going to go gun stick here. Not feeling great about this either. I'm hoping Brock Bowers on the stick route. Devon, unless it's a full blitz, it's probably not going to be Devontae Adams. We're going to go to Bowers. Bowers is going to catch it and be stopped at the two. Now, do we go for this here or take the sure points? I mean, oh, man. I would really like it if I had a uh, Y stick. That might be the move. We're going to at least see what it looks like. This could be, we're going Devontae Adams, man. We're looking for that first win on the season. If we don't get it, they got 98 yards to go. Devontae should catch it. Bang, diving catch. And pending the extra point, the Akron Summits are going to take their first lead of the series. The Y stick usually works good when you're like down to the one, two yard line. I got to make sure I don't miss this extra point though, which I just may have. No, I didn't. I'm Look. I'm not good at kicks. Every time I step up to kick an extra point even, palms are sweaty. 
Knees weak, arms are heavy. Thank God I didn't have any of mom's spaghetti or there could be vomit on my computer already. Stop it. Get some help. But regardless, uh, Akron up by one. You love to see it. Now let's see what our defense has in store for the boys here in the second half. Derrick Henry has his X Factor on, which scares the ever living daylights out of me. I don't care how old Derrick Henry is. Need to, oh my God. What a great, great open field tackle by Isaiah Palomao, the backup safety. He went for Henry's legs there on the cut stick, and man, oh man, did that thing work to perfection. Now we just have to play good zone coverage here, please. I'm going to have Malcolm Kuntz kind of just watch this side of the field here. Remember, Jackson can take off if he wants to, and it's going to be sacked. Thank you so much. Sack on the play there. We really needed that, and our defense, man, they are playing right in this one. Tyree Wilson is the first guy to get there. We're going to force the Ravens to punt again. And if we can just lock in, find the end zone, take a two-score lead, I'll be feeling pretty confident about this. Of course, got to put words into action. Words mean nothing. And so much could go wrong, and so much could go in the Ravens' favor. Let's just run out of bounds with Abdullah. Come on, shotgun here with Minshew. We got a bunch to our right, and this could be Brock Bowers' time. Brock Bowers hangs on to it. Brock Bowers is a weapon. I don't think we're going to... Oh, please don't tell me he's hurt. Please... No! That's two tight ends down now. Oh, no. That is bad. He's holding that right shoulder. Jack Jones not going to come... Or uh, injury risk high. No, we're going to sub him. But if we lose Brock Bowers for any, any significant amount of time, not only will that hurt him, you know, getting his goal, which is bad enough, but we're going to have freaking the offensive linemen out there playing tight end. Like, we already got Zach Je Fumble, but oh my God, somebody fell on it. I was about to lose my stuff there, man. And Brock Bowers is not going to come back for this game. No bueno, guys. No bueno at all. We don't want to squander this opportunity that the Ravens have given us because... Actually, screen pass doesn't seem too bad, but no, I just got a feeling that we would take a sack again, which about the last thing we could have happen. So maybe we could get Jacoby Myers on this corner route. If it's not there, I'm probably just going to go ahead and check it down to Harrison Bryant, but we will see how the play unfolds. It's not there, and I threw it anyways. Yeah, but again, Jacoby Myers got bumped on his route. I'm seeing a lot of bumps here in Madden 25. And calls that should be called, but they're not called. I mean, how do you how do you get away with that? I do not know. That should be a good punt, though, by A.J. Cole. Trying to pin him deep, and it is not as good as I thought. Ravens are going to start this from the 13. They got 13, and hopefully we can uh, force them into another punt. And we are containing Derrick Henry. He's got some, you know, some, some decent yardage, but I was kind of expecting Henry to go off for, like, 250 and so far that hasn't been the case knock on wood i would like some man coverage to be played here on the outside and i would really like max crosby okay max crosby was there and waiting in the wings getting hyped that's gonna be a third and seven i'm gonna use her up with robert spillane here i hope that derrick henry stays into block because then spillane would just be an extra defender and he's not but it's gonna be a sack again and that time it is Jenkins. We didn't see too much pressure in the first seat in the first uh, episode, but Lamar Jackson, he hasn't even really been like in Madden. You got people like Lamar Jackson and Jalen Hurts and and guys like that that just kind of like get paranoid and start scrambling around. He hasn't really played like that today, but he hasn't really handled the pressure very well either. We are primed for a big, big fourth quarter. Do we not show the stats anymore? Like. I mean, we're trying to, we're not trying to regress in Madden. Where's the stats that show like the passing yards and the rushing yards? Why is that gone? Because I actually, that was something that I actually liked, you know, looked forward to when the quarters changed is to see how teams were doing. And apparently you can't see that now. I don't know why that would be something that EA would take out of their game. But in fairness, I don't know why EA does a lot of things that EA does. All I know is we got to drive down here and score. Madison trying to find the edge, and he is just, yeah, he's running strange. 
and it's working out in our favor, and I do like it. That outside shade on Adams again. <sighs> um, that's going to be my first read, but I got to have Zach Gentry as a second read. Nope, we're going Adams all the way, and he catches it. Devontae Adams having a, I don't want to say a breakout game. He's a great receiver, but I think he had like 19 yards in the first game. He's got 87 now. He's been uh, one of Minshew's favorite targets. Of course, Brock Bowers was before he left the game also. But I do like the way that uh, Adams is playing here. And he is set to maybe go over 100. Definitely, uh, if he gets open on this drag, he's probably going to be my first read. And he is slightly open. Adams has the edge. Touchdown number two for Devontae. And we do, in fact, take a two-score game or a two-score lead. Not really because... We're going to kick the extra point, and that will make it technically a one-score game. Um, but you get the idea. I mean, we're up on the scoreboard, which at the end of the day, that is all that I could really ask for. Ravens would have to score a touchdown and get a two-point conversion just to tie it. Cannot rest on our laurels here, though. We have got to stay aggressive. Not going to be going into any prevent type of defense, which is what Madden wants me to do. And there's Zay Flowers open in the middle of the field. Yeah. See? That is what happens when, uh, you know, we're in the... Or that's Rashad Bateman. I'm sorry. I keep saying Zay Flowers, whatever. doesn't matter. One of those Ravens receivers. But that's what happens when uh, other teams in Madden, you know, they can score if they want to. We're going to use her up on Divine Diablo. It's a Derrick Henry run. Somebody please get back there. Just got to have a, you know, safe, secure tackle there. Derrick Henry does pick up four. Second and six. Ravens are driving here. Tyree Wilson has a sack already. Maybe he can get sack number two, although I'd like to just kind of have him right here in the middle of the field. JK. Nope, not JK. Tyree, where you at? Oh, that's uh, there's Zay Flowers. Okay. And calling Rashad Bateman. Zay Flowers probably all game. Jackson coming out shotgun. I don't like Richardson in the curl flat either. It is a, wow, end around there. And we are there to meet Nelson Aguilar, the 10-year vet out of USC. But the Ravens do pick up seven and they are threatening. How about pressure? They got Patrick Ricard out here, so I'm gonna use her up on Butler, and hopefully Ricard just kind of does nothing, which it's gonna be a touchdown, and that is Zay Flowers. So the Ravens could tie it with a two-point conversion. Hopefully we stop them, but I don't really feel good about that. I don't feel good that we're gonna be able to stop him. Maybe, maybe we're gonna use her up on Trayvon Merrick just in case it's a run here. I kind of hope that it is. If I'm being totally honest, we'll see. Nope, it's not going to be a run. Jackson scrambling, and I, I'm i trying to do the switch stick, which I'm assuming is in here. And I just got guys tumbleweeding and freaking Star Fox barrel rolling across the field. Game is tied, but luckily we have the ball in our possession. We got four minutes. We have to play smart football, though. Cannot force any turnovers. It's a pretty good return there by Trey Tucker. And we're going to start this drive here from the 36. Start things off screen pass here. Just kind of test the waters. Don't want to take a sack, please. Amir Abdullah going to catch it and got blockers out in front of him. So good start. Minshew at 218. Not as many yards as last week, but much more efficient. Three touchdowns compared to one interception. And I uh, didn't mean to press. I didn't mean to call a wide stick. Um, this is not the time for that, but maybe... Could be a time for a TE attack. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Uh, we don't have Brock Bowers out here, but we do have Harrison Bryant, and uh, he's something. I mean, Minshew, let's just get out of the pocket and just, yeah, that play was doomed from the start, but we do salvage six yards, which not the worst thing in the world. I'm going to actually have Amir Abdullah block here. It's probably going to be Trey Tucker, but maybe Harrison Bryant. You never know. Nope, it's going to be Tucker who... I really like this kid, man. I really like Trey Tucker a lot. Two-year pro out of Cincinnati. Very fast, good in open space, playmaker type of guy. And, you know, again, he's third leading receiver here. Speaking of Trey, let's go ahead and send him deep again. But this is probably going to be Adams on the drag. That's going to be my main first read, though. Adams just going to go ahead and get absolutely pile drive there. Pile drove, I guess, by Kyle Van Noy. Kind of getting into it there with the veteran as well after picking up a pretty nice game. We are working this clock pretty good here. I need Madison to definitely pick up this first down. Madison fall forward and nope. He is not going to fall forward. Got to go run though. Got to trust the run in this situation. 
I don't trust myself kicking a field goal, definitely. But question is, do we go inside zone or just something like out of single back? Maybe even RPO, but that's kind of risky. I mean, the single back has been working. I will say that. It definitely has been. And we'll go HP power. I like HP power here. We're going to definitely make Roquan Smith the mic and it just need alexander madison to follow our left guard please cut up field madison gonna have it and madison having a pretty good game that was clutch as we are under two minutes now we're already in field goal range but you know it's me kicking field goals we got to make ball carrier conservative most definitely maybe we can just get so deep down here that i even i feel confident kicking field goals i don't know still a lot of football left to go here so need uh alexander madison he's kind of tired too that kind of scares me i kind of need to pick up another first down we're gonna go screen but flip it to the right side can't take a sack here obviously but hopefully uh mir abdullah can pick up a first down which he is going to and just don't fumble it please that is good that is very good now we're going to force the Ravens to use their timeouts, use their last timeout. And uh, let's go ahead and run behind Kyle. Uh, yeah, well, no, not Kyle Juszczyk. I'm thinking of my SFL series. We don't have Kyle Juszczyk in this game. I'm thinking of, <laughs> yeah, thinking of the SFL. Got to get the SFL off of my mind. Madison running tough. And they're going to force the Ravens to call their final timeout. Yeah, we don't even have a fullback on roster, so apologies for that. Uh, but we are in very good position here. So actually, I mean, I mean a touchdown would just be absolutely lovely. Um, yeah, I mean, we're going to run it. It's risky to run it one more time, I know. Maybe I will. Maybe, I mean, we, yeah, we're, we're going to run it one more time. Most definitely. Um... We're going to let this clock tick as far down as humanly possible and see what happens. All right, come on, Madison. Even a touchdown here would just be lovely. Not going to be a touchdown. So we're going to kick. I mean, look, we're, we're so close now. Like, we would have to have to believe that we can kick a field goal in this situation. I mean, if I miss this, is this is like less than an extra point. So if I miss this, I need to just go ahead and retire from Madden because I don't deserve to be playing the game. So we'll call a timeout at about three seconds, kick the field goal, and hopefully get our first win of the season. Kick is up and good. So how about that 24 to 21? Kudos to the defense. They played much better than they did in the first game against LA. And a three-point victory against a now 0-2 Baltimore Ravens team. Not what you would expect from John Harbaugh and the AFC North's really front runner for the past several years. Gardner Minshew played well. There was some mistakes, yes. Uh, Madison played really well. He was breaking tackles, looking like Gumby out there, <laughs> you know, shifting and weaving and contorting his body. And, of course, Devontae Adams had the game that uh, he definitely didn't have in the first game with two touchdowns and over 100 yards. And Lamar Jackson, like 152 yards, similar to what he had in the first game. I don't know. I mean, obviously the Ravens are run heavy, but Lamar Jackson can put up yardage. Minshew cooled down on the yardage department, but three and one, much better touchdown interception ratio. And the battle of the running backs, Madison actually outdueled Derrick Henry. And he averaged 5.6 yards per carry. Abdullah averaged 6.2. Lamar Jackson never really ran. We were able to contain him and limit him. Devontae Adams, a buck 12 and two touchdowns. You'll love to see that. Trey Tucker, three for 30. Brock Bowers had that touchdown, but who knows how long he's going to be gone for. We had some sacks in this game too. John Jenkins, Christian Wilkins split one with Tyree Wilson. No picks, unfortunately, for us. Donovan Wilson had one, but some TFLs, Christian Wilkins, John Jenkins, Divine Diablo, Nate Hobbs, who was tackling Derrick Henry a lot in the open field. So all in all, good game from the Summits and nice to see our first win of the season. But here is the moment of truth. Almost don't even want to click this, but let's see how long Brock Bowers is going to be gone for. Four weeks with a torn labrum. Not the worst thing in the world, but that may hinder his goal, man. Amari Bernie out four weeks and Michael Mayer still gone for seven I may look at middle linebackers in the uh, trade block next episode just because we really 
don't have anybody except for Divine Diablo. And playing in the 3-4, it might be good to get somebody opposite side of him. But that is news for another day. We do pick up the win against the Baltimore Ravens. And finally, well, I shouldn't say finally, it's only the second. I, I was thinking it was going to be finally, but we're one and one. Nice to see a one there in the W column. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.